in your Bibles to Psalms 42. Psalms 42, and I'm going to read verse 11. Thank you for standing in obedience of God's rich and almighty word. Thank you. God is good. We stand for a lot of things, but we need to stand for the word of God because he's worthy. Psalms 42, verse 11. Starting to read Psalms 42, verse 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I bow before you this morning, dear God. Less of me and more of you, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock, my strength, my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So just to give a, a bit of background before we get into what the Holy Spirit is saying to us in this verse. The book of Psalms, or praise, was written by King David. They usually include a prayer of rescue, a call to worship, a confession of sin, and an encouragement to trust God. A prayer for those who have been slandered and a missionary psalm. In many cases, Psalms were put to music and today, they still are put to music. The title of my message today is The Hope Worth Waiting For. Amen. Today's scripture begins with a question of the mind. Why are you downcast? Why so disturbed? Are you someone who worries in advance? Are you always afraid of the future? Worried about tomorrow? Are you weary to the point where you're so weary, you're so tired, you're burdened down, you're depressed even? Do you find yourself asking these three W's, what if, when will, or why, to yourself, or even to God? Now, don't get me wrong. It is part of our makeup to analyze or question things in our minds throughout the day, especially when life's worries take us by surprise. It is our decision-making process. But the writer in this case has gone beyond what we may consider a legitimate concern or a healthy worry. Let's look at the meaning of the words the psalm used, downcast. Well, the definition of downcast is filled with melancholy, Gloomy at the thought of what you have to face. Gloomy predictions, a grim view, the darkened mood, depressed, feeling discouraged and downhearted. Then we have the other word that the psalm used, disturbed. That's too upset to say anything. Distressed about her son leaving home. Disturbed sleep, worried parents, a worried frown. One last worry check on the sleeping children. First of all, let's get this straight. We need to know that we have an adversary who would suggest defeat, despair, hopelessness to you and I 24-7, if we let him. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, plows around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. This kind of prolonged worry, though, and distress, when left to fester, will eventually cause physical and emotional problems. Or, if left untreated, it can leave you in utter despair or dehabilitated so much, so badly, that you're not even able to move. I've seen it. 
In 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it reads, In their case, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers who keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. But thank God there is help for our worries and woes. In Philippines 4, 6, 7, it's that Paul tells the church, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guide your hearts and your minds to Christ Jesus. Jesus tells us in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For my yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will give you is light. In Philippines 4, 6, it goes on to says, Don't worry about anything, but in your prayers ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. Amen. Be patient in prayer. While we wait, just be patient. Just think how freeing that would be. In Psalms 27, 14, it says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This strength is, that is from the Lord frees you and I up to keep moving forward. But we not only have to be willing to wait in prayer and, patient, and patience, but be prepared, be prepared to actively, actively wait while remaining hopeful. After all, prayer can't move standing still. So how do we do that? when we are so stressed, you may ask. Well, praying to the Father, laying it down, whatever it is, taking one day at a time, praising God, coming to church to worship him, reading the Bible, daily devotions, listening to worship songs, singing worship songs and poems that uplift you while you wait. All those things can help you and I forget what we're waiting for. The expectation is still there, but the difference is you are now waiting in hope. Waiting in hope looks happy. It looks content. And it looks at peace with yourself. And you don't want to miss this with those around you. This brings us to the next line. Put your hope in God. In terms of Advent, hope sets the stage for the others. Joy, peace, and finally love. Hope goes before these and stays with us, with all of them during the holy time and beyond. Hope is never ending. It causes excitement to build as we anticipate the greatest births of all times. The awesome birth of Jesus the Christ was foretold centuries before we read in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall call his name Emmanuel. We read about this same expectant hope that is planted into the minds of people throughout the scriptures long before the baby Jesus. These followers knew without a shadow of a doubt that God is faithful to his promises and they never wavered or stopped hoping. Generation after generation. You could say Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech, was peppered with words of hope, and a lot of what he dreamed came to pass. That is because Dr. King and many like him had a close encounter with the omniscient or all-wise, all-knowing God. When you or I have been diagnosed with a deadly disease and the words cancer or AIDS come from the doctor, don't lose hope. Look at how far God has brought us with research and treatments over time. Now, not all illnesses become a death sentence. Some have been cured, and even though we know that something will eventually end our life, it may not be that. Hoping requires more than our natural minds can think or even imagine. Hope never gives up. But you can't have an expectant hope 
without faith. Amen. What is faith? Well, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hope is God's promises. In John 6.47, it tells, uh, tells us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me has everlasting life. Hope with expectancy that better days are ahead. In Philippines 4, 19, it says, But my God shall supply all my needs, your needs, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hope in God, our creator, the father of hope, a supreme father who is able to do far more than you or I could ever imagine and has. In Psalms 137, it says, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for there is loving kindness with the Lord. With him, we are saved for sure. Faith is the key, and faith unlocks the door to hope. Faith can't work if you got none. The next line says, for I will yet praise him, regardless of what you or I are going through. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the evening. Praise him all day long. <laughs> Jesus deserves all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We praise the coming Christ for who he is to us, around us, through us, over us, before us, and within us. Don't miss the opportunity to praise our Heavenly Father. We are his, and we were made to worship him. Jesus Christ was born so that we might live in hope for a better day. Romans 15, 6 says, So that all of you together will praise with one voice the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 10, For it is by faith that we are put right with God. It is by our confession that we are saved. The last line reads, My Savior and my God. Our personal Savior and God wants a relationship with you and I. He wants us to acknowledge him for who he is to us. He's our Savior and he's our God. He expects us to lean on him at all times, especially when we have questions or concerns. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, it says, Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Finally, Hope has to be shared. It has, it has to be shared faith, has to be visualized, verbalized before it is realized. This is the time of year that hope is needed and given more than any other time of the year. With the pleas to help from various telethons, sponsor a family, Operation Christmas Child, Socket to Poverty, and the list goes on. When a people is faced with unforeseeable disaster and devastation and the very place in which they live is left in ruin and they are left in utter despair. When you or I are faced with a new diagnosis or a poor prognosis, when you or I are faced with financial hardship or a death in the family or community, food and water gives hope. Shelter and clothing gives hope. Rescue and medical attention gives hope. A listening ear or caring touch gives hope. Yes, even money gives hope. You may say, I thought money was the root of all evil, but let's be clear on this. In 1 Timothy 6.10 it says, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So money gives hope, when given in the right for the right reason at the right time. Hebrews 13, five says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So those things give hope, but the love of God trumps it all. The love of Jesus will get you, and he will be with you in any valley, any mountain that you may be on, God is with you. Just knowing that makes you excited. It ought to make you excited to share hope and spread hope in the midst of our storm. 
God is bringing you and I through, and he is bringing you and I back to him by the Holy Spirit, and we want everyone to know. You want them to know where God has brought you from, where he has taken you. You want to share that God is the source of your hope with someone looking for hope. Pass on the hope of Christ Jesus. In 2 Thessalonians 2.14, it says, God called you to this through the good news we preach to you. He called you to possess your share of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The same hope that is the expectant arrival of the baby Jesus continues today because what he did for you and me, and we have hope as we wait for his triumphant return. In Revelations 22:12, it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Now that is the kind of hope worth waiting for. Is there any of you that feel that God has forgotten you? You have been waiting, praying, and doing everything that the Holy Spirit has led you to do? Well, I'm here to let you know that God has not forgotten you. He, hasn't he brought you a mighty long way? Didn't he answer that for you? God loves you more than you or I will ever know. He is the great adjuster, a great fixer, picker-upper, and it is never too late. It's never too late to fix it for you. Put your hope in Jesus, a hope worth waiting for.